will do it over. Went out at about the two-yard line. Alan Duncan, we're talking about his prowess. He's 33 out of 33 in the extra point department this year. Has kicked 10 of 15 field goals. And he has scored 63 points by kicking this year for Tennessee. And Merrill, we might add that he was a walk-on on campus. Came on without a scholarship. He's been a real nemesis against Kentucky. Uh, kicked one to 25 yards this uh, year with five seconds left in the game to beat Kentucky by 20 to 17 score. He's a sidewinder. And the Tennessee Vols, who are very used to bowl games, having been in 22 of them, the Purdue Boilermakers are making their third appearance. They have won both previous appearances in the Rose Bowl and last year in the Peach Bowl. Once again, Purdue sends three men deep. Larry Perry is back there along with 44, Wayne Smith. And this time, the ball will be kicked from the 35 by Alan Duncan. There's a lot of people spending an awful lot of time and hard work here, but I really do appreciate it. It's a beautiful watch. Congratulations, section deserve it. Thank you, Ken. Let's go upstairs to Merlin Dodd. All right, Howard, and the Tennessee Vols, who won seven and lost four this past season, but finished a winner with a couple of big victories, will be kicking off and teeing it up as Alan Duncan from Norris, Tennessee. He's a junior, and he's a good one. He kicked 40 straight PATs including seven last year, going back deep. Number 26 is Larry Perry for the Purdue Boilermakers, who are nine and two. And we're underway in the 21st annual Blue Bonnet Bowl, and that kick went out of bounds. So we'll do it over. Went out at about the two-yard line. Alan Duncan, we're talking about his prowess. He's 33 out of 33 in the extra point department this year, has kicked 10 of 15 field goals. And he has scored 63 points by kicking this year for Tennessee. And Merrill, we might add that he was a walk-on on campus. Came on without a scholarship. He's been a real nemesis against Kentucky. Uh, kicked one to 25 yards this uh, year with five seconds left in the game to beat Kentucky by 20 to 17 score. He's a sidewinder. And the Tennessee Vols, who are very used to bowl games, having been in 22 of them, the Purdue Boilermakers are making their third appearance. They have won both previous appearances in the Rose Bowl and last year in the Peach Bowl. Once again, Purdue sends three men deep. Larry Perry is back there along with 44, Wayne Smith. And this time, the ball will be kicked from the 35 by Alan Duncan. Glad to have you aboard from the Blue Bonnet Bowl, a New Year's Eve tradition. Pretty good hit. And it's gonna be Wayne Smith a yard deep in the end zone at the 20. And he has dropped down to the 24. So we're underway. And wildly cheering fans from Purdue and Tennessee are here tonight. Subtle was in on the tackle. Here is the Purdue backfield featuring Mark Herman at quarterback. Augustiniak and Wally Jones are the running backs. The wide receivers, Bart Burrell, Dave Young, Raymond Smith. And the offensive line for Purdue, Fields, Schwann, Quinn, Hall, and McKenzie. And they'll run behind McKenzie. He's excellent. Mark Herman, one of the nation's great quarterbacks for the Purdue Boilermakers. Augustiniak tries the left side, crosses the 25 to about the 27-yard line. And the tackler is Bill Bates, number 40, the strong safety. Now the defensive line, Jones, Davis, Gillespie, White, and Ingram. With Gillespie keying as the nose tackle, the linebackers, Danny Spradlin and Craig Pukey. And the defensive backs, Jones, Martin, James, and Bates will be tested by Mark Herman. Harrison Burrell are the wide receivers now for Purdue. And Young in motion. And it's the completion of Ben McCall coming out of the backfield. Purdue may have the first down just shy of the 35-yard line. Wilbert Jones, number seven, the left cornerback, a junior from Brownsville, Tennessee, to make the tackle. And let's see where they mark it. It may be uh, close enough to have the sticks brought out, but let's see. Well, Merle, we know we're going to see a lot of passing from Purdue with a great quarterback, Mark Herman, number nine. We're looking at him there on our screen. But we've also got an excellent defensive back. You're going to see a lot of him in Roland James for the Tennessee Volunteers. Purdue missed it by about a foot. It's third down and a foot to go for the Boilermakers. And Purdue will come on with a pair of tight ends. Augustiniak cracks for the first down. He had to go across the 35, and he made it. 
Brad White, number 90, a junior from Idaho Falls, Idaho, stopped the play for the uh, Tennessee Vols. Tom Jaleski, a tackle, comes in as a second tight end. He has to change uniform uh, jersey. That's Johnny Majors, a head coach of Tennessee, back at his alma mater. He was an All-American single-wing tailback back in the 50s. Of course, built winners at Iowa State and Purdue. Smith and Burrell are wide for Purdue. After one first down, they go to the running game. Mike Augustiniak, a hard-nosed guy, runs for a couple and is brought down by Steve Davis, number 57, the defensive left end, the senior from Knoxville. Augustiniak, a senior out of Leo, Indiana, has raced for 295 yards this year and has caught passes for 26 and has scored four touchdowns. It'll be second down and eight. Mike Harris, 41, a senior from Los Angeles, and Mark Burrell, 87, are split. And this is Burrell, who was a high school teammate of Mark Herman. Herman to the air, and he's got one to Mike Harris, number 41, at the 45-yard line, just across the 45. Danny Martin, number 29, a junior from McMinnville, Tennessee, had the coverage on the play, and Mike Harris has picked up another first down. He broke his jaw just a few weeks ago, in fact, in the game in Iowa. But he is back in action. That's one of the nice things about a post-season. The injured guys have a chance to get back. The Boilermaker's been out of action now for several weeks, and a lot of those fellas, although they have gotten rusty, they have gotten well. All right, here is Mark Kerman back to the running game, and this time it's Ben McCall, the tailback. And McCall finds a big hole to get down into Tennessee territory to the 45-yard line. Brian Ingram, number 84, a junior out of Memphis, Tennessee, and the best defensive end for the balls, makes the stop after an eight-yard game. Ben McCall out of Chicago, a junior. You saw his rushing average there, Merle, uh, better than five yards a carry. He hasn't picked up much yardage, but when he's done it, he's done it well. There's head coach Jim Young from Purdue, and completing what? his third year there. What a job he's done, huh? All right, McCall in motion, out to the right. Augustiniak through the middle, whacks his way down to about the 40-yard line, another first down, and it is Craig Pookie, number 44, the senior from Seattle, Washington, the linebacker, making the tackle. Talking about Jim Young a moment ago, as we go back and take a look at this man, who's gonna be a very big man before the night's over, Dave Young and his blocking ability. Steve McKenzie, 74, also was doing an excellent job in blocking there for Purdue. Young, though, counted on quite a bit. Done an excellent job of blocking. So Mark Herman has marched the Boilermakers, and this time he goes to number 37, John Macon. And Macon swings wide to the left, goes down across the 35 to the 34. And the free safety, Roland James, the great All-American from Jamestown, Ohio, makes the tackle. Purdue is very versatile in the running back department. They'll run a lot of backs in there. They'll also run a lot of receivers in. This game is important, Merle, to both ball clubs been quite a while since Johnny Majors and the Volunteers have won eight ball games in a year. They're seven and four on the year. They have not won eight games since 1973. Purdue wants to win 10, something they've never done. Second down four, that's Burrell wide to the left. And in motion, Mike Harris. August, another uh, McCall, and McCall is still on his feet. McCall fighting at the 20 and down to the 19 before he is brought down by Roland James, the strong safety, number 14. So Roland James, we thought he would be busy tonight. That's a 15-yard pickup and a first down. Taking a look at it again, number 13. McCall came out of a reserve ranks to gain 342 yards in his final three games. He was not a starter earlier in the year. He was a reserve. 5.7 per carry. That's a fine, healthy average. Now the first down for the Boilermakers. In motion to the left side, that's McCall again. As Young swung in motion to the left, they go to McCall. He is brought down by Charles Gillespie, number 75, the nose tackle, a sophomore out of Spring City, Tennessee. A gain on the play, well, nothing this time. Second down, 10 at the 20. Might have lost a foot. Burrell, 87. Harris, 41, of the wide receivers for the Boilermakers. Pete Quinn is the center. By the way, Pete Quinn, they had a big uh, barbecue at a ranch out here for both ball clubs. I want to tell you, Pete Quinn, number 63, the center, knocked him dead with an Elvis bit. That's Young in motion to the left. Herman back to throw. Goes to McCall out of the backfield. The game is short at about the 16. Steve Davis, a senior from Knoxville, makes the tackle. 
on Ben McCall, a junior out of Chicago, Illinois. The Boilermakers, with their 9-2 record, finished second of the Big Ten. They're starting to break up that old song of the Big Two and the Little Eight. Certainly, Purdue, with its tremendously impressive football teams in the last two years, have moved right into title contention of the Big Ten from here on out. 87, Bart Burrow. As you look at Mark Herman, his high school teammate, this is what he has done statistically. They go into the shotgun. First look now at the shotgun for the Tennessee defense. Almost picked off. Number 57, Steve Davis almost got it before Raymond Smith, the intended receiver, was there, and Davis just about had himself an interception. Davis done an excellent job. The shotgun formation is not unusual for Purdue. We expected that they might come in with it. Davis doing an excellent job defensively. Another new maneuver, Merle, this evening is Dave Young, the tight end, going in motion. That's something unusual for the Boilermakers. All right, the field goal attempt will be done by Seibel, and the kick is not good. So it is not good. And the Tennessee Volunteers have stopped the Boilermakers. We'll be back right after this message. We are proud to announce on April 20th, Amelia Island off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida will be the site of the Mujani Tennis Championships with some of the best in the world of women's tennis right here on the Ms. Lou Television Network. Now the Tennessee Volunteers led by Jimmy Streeter at quarterback. Running out of the eye, and he can run, he can throw, and he throws on first down, it's incomplete. Intended for Willie Gall, number 26, the wing back. Wayne Smith, 44, had the coverage on the play. He's the left quarterback, a senior out of Chicago, Illinois. Jimmy Streeter has Hubert Simpson, 32, and James Berry is his running back. And as his wide receivers, Anthony Hancock, Reggie Harper's the tight end, Willie Galt. And the offensive line of Sutton, Marin, North, Jester, and Irwin. And Irwin is a giant of a tackle. Galt is wide to the right, and now they switch off. Galt, Hancock going out in motion. James, Jimmy Streeter with a slot right. Second and 10 at the 20. The tailback Simpson, and Hubert gets up to about the 23. Number 59, James Looney, the linebacker, making a stop. Here's the front five for the Purdue Boilermakers, and it's solid all the way across. Tom Kingsbury, one of the smallest guys you'll see up there, but he is really tough. Kevin Motts and James Looney are the linebackers. And the defensive secondary, Wayne Smith, Bill Kay, and Robert Williams, Tim Sinop. Streeter going upstairs, going for it all, and it's incomplete. Anthony Hancock was covered by Bill Kay. Anthony Hancock, who can really move it. He's on the track team at Tennessee, a sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. And this defensive unit of Purdue, the jump defense, which gives you a little bit different look. Some say a flex like the Dallas Cowboys. A little tough here. One of the questions we had, Merle, was whether they could uh, stop a Vera offense that they have not seen. Well, on the first series, they did. Johnny Warren is back to punt, and Dave Rutherford is back deep for the Purdue Boilermakers, and it'll be a Tennessee roll off the foot of Johnny Warren from Jessup, Georgia, a freshman, and finally the ball rolls out of bounds at the 34-yard line, and Purdue is coming up with its second offensive possession. So here at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, eight minutes and 13 seconds remain to be played in the first quarter after that 44-yard kick, and we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Purdue ready to roll for the second time tonight. No score. Burl and Smith are wide. The running back to McCall and Augustiniak. And this is McCall breaking it back up the middle. And he bangs his way to the 45-yard line for a 12-yard pickup and a first down. And once again, it's Raymond James, a free safety, who has to make the tackle. He's been busy, Don. He has been busy. He's going to be busy. That was an 11-yard game. But let's look at Roland James, an all-Southeast Conference selection. Certainly a ball player that's going to go high in the pros. Doing a good job of pursuit. Watch this fine tackle. There. He only gets hold of one foot, but he brings him down. First and ten for the Boilermakers on the 45. Merle Herman, Don Perkins, and Howard David with you at the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Play action. Herman cuts it away, and it's incomplete, intended for Bart Burrell. Bart Burrell came out of Carmel, Indiana, a junior high school teammate, and 
Purdue was about the only team that uh, really showed much interest in Burl, and he has just turned out to be a magnificent performer for Jim Young and the Boilermakers. It'll be second down and 10 on the 45. On the first series of drives, Purdue was able to move the ball down the field. We're looking at Jim Young, the head coach, just completing his third year there at Purdue. He's got the, had the first game of the decade, and he's got the last one. As Ben McCall breaks it back up through the middle, fumbles the football for about a four-yard gain. All the way down to the 42-yard line. He got an extra four yards after fumbling the football. And number 66, Dale Schwann, the left guard, was right there all over it. McCall done an excellent job getting a good surge out of that offensive lineup. He was a high school of Chicago Mendel. He was 0-17 his junior and senior year. Done an excellent job of running there. That's not bad when you can come back from 0-17. Johnny Major's a little concerned now about... Purdue being able to move the football against this defensive unit. By the way, they marked the ball in the 44, making the play dead as the fumble was made. Augustiniak and McCall, but Herman's going to go for Burrow, and Burrow's got it. Burrow's got it down inside the 25-yard line and out of bounds of the 24. Danny Morton, number 29, had the coverage, but watch Burrow. Tell you what, they look like pros on this one. Quarterback there dropping back, doing an excellent job. Herman has got a good sight on Burrow. Burrow doing a nice fingertip grab there. Bolitnikov, he's a lot like Bolitnikov in there with great fingers, great hands. A 19-yard pickup for the Boilermakers. Putting wide to the right, Raymond Smith. Burrow going wide to the left. They pick up a slot man left. And this is Mike Harris. Herman and pretty good rush put on McCall as the intended receiver. Kenny Jones, who is 6'5", number 99, a sophomore from Nashville, came in and he might have deflected. At least he gave Herman a great big pair of hands to try to throw over. No score in this game. Six minutes, 57 seconds remaining to be played from the eighth wonder of the world, the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. John Macon, 37. Ben McCall, 13 of the running backs now. Second down, Purdue. This is Mark Herman. John Macon, not much. Craig Cookie, number 44. All Southeastern Conference linebackers stopped that play in a hurry, and not much was right. The loss of two, third down, 12 coming up now. Augustinia comes back in. Burrow comes back in for Purdue. It's a beautiful night in the Astrodome. I don't think we're going to have a record-setting number of points, though, the way these teams are playing defensively, Merle. They've been averaging in the last six years about 57 points per game. Shotgun formation. And the deep man is Herman, of course. The gunslinger from Carl on the chase, and he is dropped down and thrown for a loss. Way back there by Brad White, who led the team in quarterback sacks with seven. And Steve Davis, 57, was back there to be in on the play, and I thought I saw a flag thrown, maybe not. The old cliche, the best defense against a, a passing quarterback is a good pass rush. You're looking at number Brad White there. He will not be denied. He brings down quarterback Mark Herman. 11-yard loss. 11-yard loss, and Greg Hayes will punt it away. And does into the end zone. Greg, a sophomore from Fort Wayne. Kick of 37 yards. And we're down to 542 to go in the first quarter with no score. Let's pause briefly now for these messages from our participating advertisers. Well, the Tennessee Vols will put it in play for the second time tonight. Gold and Hancock are in wide. They go to the slot and out of the eye with uh, tailback James Berry running the football, brought down by Ken Lausha, number 72, the all Big Ten selection, and most decorated defensive player on this Purdue team. He's a senior from Richmond Heights, Ohio. And he really anchors this, uh, for all practical purposes, five-man front. The two outside men are technically listed as linebackers. Keena Turner, all Big Ten, and Tom Kingsbury. Jimmy Streeter at the controls. Streeter firing away, and he hits Willie Galt. Galt gets up near the 30, brought down by Tim Sunup, a sophomore from Merrillville, Indiana, number 43. And it's third down and about a yard. Glenn Ford is now coming in at one of the running back spots, 
And coming in now for Tennessee also is Kyle Aguilard, number 87, to give Tennessee a double tight end offense. He'll be in there with Reggie Harper. Do you think that Kyle Aguilard can't pick a mean guitar as he did out at the barbecue yesterday? This guy had a good time, too. All right. Last man to the dive. The last man is Hubert Simpson. And he dives across the 30 for a first down. Kevin Mott, 58, the senior linebacker from South Bend, joined by Calvin Clark, number 94, a junior from Atlanta, Georgia, to make the stop for Purdue. Purdue not giving much up defensively. After their 34 to 31 to 14 loss against Minnesota, they steamrolled everybody else, winning six straight ball games, and they're in top defensive form here tonight. Galt to the left, Hancock to the right for Tennessee. No score in this game. Tennessee has had 14 yards offense now and they're trying to get more as Hubert Simpson a real workhorse who ran for 792 yards this year plugs his way out to about the 32 brought down by Tom Kingsbury number 15 one of the smallest tough linemen you'll ever see and Kevin Mott number 58 the senior linebacker a gain of a well maybe a half yard it'll be second down coming up for Tennessee 349 to go in the first quarter from the Astrodome. Purdue has had 90 yards total offense here in the first period. Splitting to the right side, that's Hancock. Reader throwing on the run, he overthrows Willie Galt. He has come out the other way. The coverage by number 44, Wayne Smith. So the incompleted pass stops the clock with 335 to go in the first period and third down coming up. The last quarterback uh, of Streeter style that Purdue faced was Ohio State's Rod Gerald, and that was two years ago. So it was sort of an unanswered question, how well will they handle a good beer quarterback? And so far here in the first quarter of play, the Boilermakers have done pretty well. Galt comes to the left side, Hancock to the right side, third down coming up. The offensive line of Tennessee has been a little inconsistent this year, but now Streeter, straight drop back, rifles it over the middle, and it's intercepted by Kevin Mott, the linebacker. He's down inside the 30 at the 28, and Hubert Simpson stops him right there. So the Boilermakers pick off a Streeter pass and have great field position on the 28-yard line. Quarterback Streeter there dropping back, straight back. He thinks he's got an intended receiver over. We're going to see number 58, Kevin Mott, there, the linebacker, doing an excellent job backing up the intended receiver with Ford, the running back. Mott's doing an excellent job. The Boilermakers in great shape now. Tennessee's into the field. And there again, Don, that jump defense is very hard to figure out, especially when you're seeing it for the first time. That's Bart Burrow wide to the right side. Smith going the other way. Irvin on a handoff to Ben McCall. McCall up the middle, got some yardage down to the 22. Good pickup on the play. And the tackler was Charles Gillespie, number 75, the nose tackle, or nose guard, if you will. A gain of six, it'll be second down and four. Wally Jones, 32, comes in for the first time tonight in the backfield for the Boilermakers as they continue to bring fresh backs in against this Tennessee defense. Tom Gillespie has put on number 82. He's in as a double tight end with Dave Young. That's Jones inside the 20th, the 19th, short of a first down. Stopped by Brad White, number 90, who is just an outstanding football player. And you're looking also at Kenny Jones, number 99, and the ever-present Roland James, number 14 up there. It is third down in a yard. And Wally Jones goes out of the backfield for Purdue. Talk about the incentive that these teams might have. The Volunteers, 7-4, and four, want to win eight games for the first time since 73. Also, Merle, they've got a lot of underclassmen. I understand they have over 40 freshmen on the ball club. This time it's McCall out of the stock guy, and he is inside the 20 at about the 17. He might have the first down. Ben McCall and Carlton Gunn, number 65, is now in there at middle guard. And he's up to make the stop, but it's a first down for Purdue. Raymond Smith, 81, comes into the game now for the Boilermakers. He is a wide receiver, a senior from Paris, Kentucky. Two minutes, 12 seconds left to play in the... First quarter, Dave Young, number 80, will be a factor in this game. He's the tight end, and Herman loves to throw to him. He's looking for him right now. There he is, right out of his hands on the three-yard line. Roland James is going to hawk him all night. 
was over there to cover him on the play. Got to say, a good matchup all evening. There we're looking at great quarterback Mark Herman, his favorite receiver, Young, and that excellent defensive back, the guy that can do it all, Roland James there for the Tennessee Volunteers. Look at that. Tips it away right at the last minute to break Young's concentration. It is second down and 10 coming up. Our number one awards, the Hertz number one awards coming up at halftime. You be sure and be with us for that. All right, Howard. And this time it is McCall going in motion to the left side. Herman on second down. Throwing the run to Young. And Young is pulled down at about the 12-yard line by Brian Ingram, number 84, the junior from Memphis, who is a solid defensive end. Dave Young, I'll tell you, the pros can't wait to get their hands on this guy. Down. I tell you what, Merle, and not only that, he's now caught passes in 30 straight games with that catch. Johnny Majors has just absolutely turned on the Tennessee football fans. And of course, they were never turned off. The Tennessee fans have been so great, they packed that stadium, and it's going to be enlarged over 90,000 for next year. They'll fill it. They always fill it. Third down at about five. Herman will go to the run to Ben McCall, and McCall spins inside the 10. He is down near first down territory. Howard? Merrill, we saw, I mentioned before about the Hertz number one awards. What the Hertz number one awards are, the outstanding high school athlete in each state, it could be a male or a female, receives this award, and we'll show you the whole presentation, the award ceremonies that took place a couple of months ago. And of course, O.J. Simpson is so heavily behind that, and he is really impressed with the youngsters. Pretty good name, too. <clears throat> Well, they're going to measure it, and it's going to be that close. And now Purdue has a decision to make on fourth down and inches. Ben McCall, who carried the ball a moment ago, had 148 yards against Indiana in the finale, and Jim Young, the head coach of the Purdue Boilermakers, has made his decision. The ball is resting at about the eight-yard line. No score, a minute 12 seconds left to play. Purdue has now moved for 110 yards total offense. Bolton and Irwin are in there, and they're going to go Augustiniak and McCall of the running back out of the stacked eye, and the handoff goes to Augustiniak, and he is down to the five-yard line, stopped by Brad White, number 90, the junior from Idaho Falls, Idaho, and it's first down for Purdue on the Tennessee Five. Augustiniak being a good man to give it to. He's a senior, but he's got the best weight out there going 6'1", 217 pounds. They need a lot of crunch, and they got a lot of effort from the offensive side of that Purdue line. First down and goal to go for the Boilermakers, who stormed through the Big Ten with a 9-2 and two record this year. I tell you, they have really done well against the toughies of the last years as, again, they go to the run, and Ben McCall takes it and Ben McCall fumbles the football, and let's see what this is all about as they get ready to unstack. Tennessee says, we recovered the football. Let's watch McCall. Take a look at it. McCall there turning inside, getting excellent blocking from the right offensive line of the Boilermakers. Right there, number 14, Roland James gets a hand in it. The ball squirts loose, number 99. Kenny Jones comes up with it for the Volunteers. And so the Boilermakers are denied. They're winning the battle, but have not won the war here in the first quarter. And a happy Kenny Jones goes to the sideline. Jones, a sophomore from Nashville at 6'5", 251 pounds. And so the Tennessee Volunteers shake the ball loose and take it over with 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. If we looked at stats, they all belong to the Purdue Boilermakers, but they have not crossed the goal line. Now Jimmy Streeter puts the ball attack in motion. And here comes the beer and the flip back to James Berry, and Berry is out of bounds as he swings wide. Tom Kingsbury contained the play, number 15, the outside linebacker with Wayne Smith, number 44 over there, to shove him out of bounds. A gain of three, it'll be second down and seven. Jay Williams has moved to right guard for Mike Jester now for Tennessee. Purdue is the first Big Ten team to play in a bowl game in Texas. Tennessee is playing its first game ever against the Big Ten school, and that is Hancock wide to the right. And here's that jump defense moving around for Purdue. And Jimmy Streeter on a long count, checking out possibly. Gets the play in motion, and the pitch comes back to his trailing back. And that's James Berry, and he is knocked down by Keena Turner, number 85, with great pursuit from Ken Lauchen. 
the middle guard, the all Big Ten selection, who really put the heat on. And we're down to 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. And the clock is running, and the first quarter's about over. After a gain of three, it'll be third down and seven as we open play in the second period here at the Astrodome. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score for New Nothing, Tennessee Nothing. The second quarter comes up right after this. Oh, he's waiting. That's right, with him. Here is Boilermaker Pete, the mascot of the Purdue Boilermakers. As the, Bo the Boilermakers defensive unit goes to work in the second period, and Jimmy Streeter being pursued, reversing, going the other way, throwing on the run, has the open man. And he hits uh, number 85, Reggie Harper, is tight end. Bill Kay gets it out of bounds, but Reggie Harper, an all Southeast Conference selection, picks up a first down. Well, this time Streeter was rolling out to his right. He wanted to run or throw to his right, but he does an excellent job there of reversing his field. And Harper does a good job of getting open for that uh, ball. Harper, tight end, doing an excellent job, all Southeast Conference. And the Purdue Boilermakers suffer an injury on that last play, and it could be a very costly one. At the 15-yard line, Kevin Motts, the linebacker, goes down and is being helped up as Jimmy Streeter comes to the sideline to talk to his head coach, Johnny Majors. Kevin Mott, the senior from South Bend, Indiana, has kind of been injury prone in his career. He's second on the team in tackles with 57. He's had a bad knee since the Iowa ball game. And let's hope that this is just gonna be a temporary thing. Yes, sir, those Tennessee fans are out in force. They're here from everywhere, including Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Gatlinburg is well, about uh, 300 folks are here, and Zeno Wall organized the group and brought him up here. And I'll tell you, he's some kind of a goodwill ambassador, isn't he? Some kind of promoter, Merle. Uh, yeah. Zeno was here in full force. So, Kevin Motts goes to the sideline. Jimmy Streeter really puts pressure on the defense with his scrambling act. And one thing he's going to have to do to be successful against the Boilermakers is he's going to have to be able to throw the football because nobody can run exclusively against the Purdue defense. All right, here we go. And that's golf foot wide, and the handoff goes to Simpson. Up across the 40 to about the 42. Mike Marks, who has replaced Kevin Motts as the linebacker, he's a junior out of Chicago, makes the tackle. Marks has seen a lot of action this year. So uh, what Purdue will suffer there in the drop-off, they're about equal, I would think, in ability. It'll be second down coming up for the Volunteers, second down and five. Merle Herman, Don Perkins, and Howard David with you in the Astrodome, and we, we wish all of you the happiest of New Year's coming up. We're not far away, are we? Jimmy Streeter in command. Simpson right up the middle, a big hole across midfield for a first down to the 49. Marcus McKinney, number 34, and Tom Sinna, 43. The safety men have to make the stop after an eight-yard pickup. Gilbert Simpson ran for four TDs against Notre Dame at a 40-18 to 18 win. And when the volunteers and with running like this, it's easy to see why. Good leg action there, getting up in the air, getting away from would-be tacklers before number 34, Marcus McKinney, brings him down. Now, Terry Daniels, 43, comes in to join Simpson in the backfield. And James Berry is in there, too, and he runs the ball across midfield, down to about the 48, brought down by uh, James Moody, number 59, the linebacker, and Calvin Clark, 94, the defensive left tackle for Purdue. So it is second down and seven. Coalfield, all right, welcome aboard. Second down, Lee North moves up over the ball for Tennessee. And on the sideline, you're looking at number 10, that's Alan Duncan, the kicker. Oh, a misfire. And they go after the ball. Marcus Jackson chasing. Did Marcus Jackson come up with it? No. It was number 85, Tina Turner. The old Big Ten selection. And an All-American on many teams with Marcus Jackson in pursuit. James Berry, the intended ball carrier on that one. A good pressure put on by 77, Marcus Jackson there. Number 85, Tina Turner coming up with it. Good defensive play by the Boilermakers. Well, we're down to 13-14 to go in the first half here in the Astrodome in Houston. And Merle, that's the second turnover for the Volunteers from Tennessee. Wally Jones and Mike Augustinia come on as a running back. Purdue almost had a touchdown earlier, fumbled the ball into the end zone, recovered. Now Herman will try to get it all with Burl, and Burl makes the reception. 
Watch his footwork. He is unbelievable. At the 20-yard line, Burrow dragged his feet, made the catch, went out of bounds, and look at it. Good pass route being run by Burrow, but great blocking being done by that offensive line of the Boilermakers. Number 87 there. Well, we got Burrow. Maybe it's Willard. No, that is Mr. Burrow. No, Kyle Aguilar is the uh, big tight end who wears 87 for Tennessee. He's a Texan, by the way. But right now, it is Raymond Smith with wide to the left side. And the handoff goes to John Macon. Macon is inside the 20 to about the 19. Chris Bolden, number 61, who is now at right linebacker, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, and a two-year letterman for the balls, makes the tackle. It'll be, let's see where they mark the ball. They mark the ball near the 18-yard line. It'll be second down, eight. Purdue is now 135 yards offense, Tennessee at 32. Let me run my calculator on that one again, however, for Purdue. That's Young on the move. And Herman swings it with a flag down, goes to Macon, coming out of the backfield. He's wrestled out of bounds near the 12 by Wilbert Jones, number seven, but flags were thrown as the play got underway. Man in motion there, Young, I said earlier, was an unusual move by the Boilermakers. It is not unusual. It's a move that they use oftentimes to take advantage of his fine pass-catching ability. All that is going to be for naught, though. There's holding on Purdue. And the first penalty. But this uh, first half has been very free of penalties and Purdue caught for holding and the walk-off will come. There's no score here at the Astrodome. And of course, the Astrodome is the site of the 21st annual Blue Bonnet Bowl. And of course, when we talk about the Blue Bonnet, we talk about the nation's most exciting postseason game for just a big explosive offense. 57 yards combined, or 57 uh, points rather, combined by both teams in the last six years in this ball game. We're going to have to hurry it up this evening, though. We're into the second quarter with 12.27 left, and nobody's got on the scoreboard. But Don, remember last year with Stanford? Went wild in the second half. Out of the shotgun, Herman's got to throw in a hurry because Tennessee had a great rush with Bolden, the linebacker, coming on the play, number 61. And Tennessee, yes, Tennessee will blitz that uh, shotgun. Little shovel pass there intended for number 32, Wally Jones. But on that kind of a pass, the receiver or intended receiver is so close that you really have to feather it in there. Mike Harris, 41, Bart Burrell, 87. That's Burrell's footing wide to the right. They're in now with Jones and Macon, the running backs, and out of the shotgun, Mark Herman. Herman throwing for Harris, and Harris cut back over the middle, inside the 25 of the 24, and Roland James, number 14, the All-American free safety, makes the tackle. Shotgun passing situation here gives the quarterback, even a good one like Herman, more time to find his pretended receiver. Mike Harris finds him downfield. Volunteers are playing kind of loose because Purdue had to pick up an awful lot of yardage. After a third down and 18, it is now fourth down and 15. And they're going to go. Johnny Majors wondering, can we do it here? And Herman going to try to do it, and they nail him back on the 33-yard line. Charles Gillespie, number 75, the nose tackle from Spring City. Tennessee makes the tackle and sacks Mark Herman, and the Volunteers stop the Boilermakers again. Gillespie going in after Herman. Herman pumping right there. Thought he had a man open. There, Gillespie didn't care if he had a man open or not. He got him. No score in the Astrodome in Houston. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Merle, let me comment on this because it's hardly consistent with your telling me you're 37 years old, but whatever. Well, we got started early. <laughs> Thanks to Tex Thornton and the gang. Jimmy Streeter going all the way, but uh, well overshooting his intended receiver, Willie Galt. Galt did not run the deep pattern, so something broke down there. Tim Sinna, 43, had the coverage. Willie Galt, a freshman out of Griffin, Georgia, a real burner. Check it in now with Reggie Harper. The tight end and something just broke down, Don. Streeter's a 50% passer coming into this game with over 1,200 yards for the year, but he's having trouble with that Boilermaker defense. A lot of people had trouble with Purdue, though, defensively all year long. It is now a second down and 10 coming up for the Tennessee Vols. Golden Hancocker wide. Jimmy Streeter on 
almost all the records of Tennessee. How about this little maneuver? But he has knocked off his feet. Marcus McKenzie, the free safety, came up and played that one very well. Had to believe that that was a broken play on the part of the volunteers, though, because Krieger looked very confused. Looks a little confused there now as he looks in the sidelines, but he certainly did as he rolled out on that naked reverse. And it was a naked reverse. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> when you're out there all alone. Well, the Blue Bonnet Bowl featuring the Purdue Boilermakers against the Tennessee Balls. That's Hancock would wide to the left side, Galt to the right. On third down, 11, Streeter flips it out to Simpson coming out of the backfield, but he's going to be short of the mark of the 39. Tom Sennett, the strong safety, and a real sticker, makes the tackle, and that'll bring on the punting unit. Uh, Tim uh, Sennett, beg your pardon, not Tom. And going back deep for Purdue is number 48, and that is David Rutherford, and John Warren will be in to punt. We've got another Purdue man down. So we have a timeout here with uh, 10 minutes, 36 seconds, but only a brief one, just uh, long enough to move James Looney, the linebacker, off the field. So a brief official's timeout to move the injured player off, and here we go. Rutherford is deep, and Warren will kick it away for Tennessee. Freshman from Jessup, Georgia, with a 40.5 average, booted 163 against Alabama. Rutherford will let it bounce, and it does, and out of bounds on the 26-yard line of Purdue. So the Boilermakers will take another shot at Tennessee. There's no score with 10 minutes, 17 seconds left to go in the first half after a 35-yard kick. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Mark Herman and the Boilermakers put the ball in play on the 26-yard line, and this is Wally Jones trying to swing wide to the left, brought down by Bill Bates, a strong safety from Knoxville, a freshman. He's a tough kid. He was great in the Alabama game. And in that Alabama game, by the way, Tennessee had a 17 to nothing lead before succumbing to the powerful Crimson Tide. Wally Jones, what he did in 1979 coming into the game tonight. Over to the sideline, Raymond Smith and Jim Young in the headset. Mike Harris has replaced Smith. Burl is in there, 87. Herman, and the ball is tipped and almost intercepted. Mike L. Coffer, number 93, a freshman from Knoxville, who is just a tremendous prospect at 6'2 and 217, got his hands up to knock the ball away. Did a good job. Linebackers are always disgusted when they get back in the area, do an excellent job of deflecting the ball, but they all want to pick it up and run with it. They don't get that many opportunities. Mike L. Copper, he's going to be a name and a familiar figure to Tennessee fans for the next three years as Jones goes in motion for the Boilermakers. And on the draw is John Macon. Macon bangs out across the 30, going to about the 33. But they're short of a first down. And Craig Pukey, number 44, the linebacker, makes the stop. Herman is now 7 out of 13 for 74 yards. And going back deep for Tennessee, Roland James, number 14. And back to do the punting, Greg Hayes, the sophomore from Fort Wayne with a 39-yard kicking average. And a long shot of 73 this year. Kind of a line drive kick and a fair catch called for and taken by Val Bunksdale up short at about the 39-yard line. The ball's come out of this thing with good field position. Certainly have, and they're in excellent shape uh, considering no points have been scored in this game, and offensively, they have not been able to move. That 26-yard punt by Purdue has put them in excellent position. Merle, we're going to see them go against the junk defense. That's what they call Purdue. This year, they stopped people 96 times for 454 yards and lost. Last year, they were fourth nationally defensively. Gary Johnson, or Gary Moore, rather, is now in, in the Tennessee backfield with Hubert Simpson. Jimmy Streeter running the offense. Course. He's at the 42, brought down by Mike Mark, who replaced the injured Kevin Mott, and Marcus McKinney, the free safety, a sophomore from Barberton, Ohio, who 
who started a lot of ball games and started the one tonight. Second down coming up for the Tennessee ball to no score. Simpson, that last ball carrier, has an interesting philosophy. He likes to run tough. He doesn't want to dodge anybody. He says all they're going to get is knees, shoulder pads, and a helmet. Willie Galt, you saw him getting set, ready to go. Wide to the right, second down, and Streeter with play action. Now the scramble is on, the pursuit is on, he fires it away, and he completes it to Willie Gold, who had to come back to help him out. Wayne Smith, number 44, had the tackle, and Marcus Jackson was chasing Jimmy Streeter all over the place. So they don't wind up with much, a couple, but at least no loss. Willie Galt, three receptions, 95 yards. He's a freshman, and you'll hear a lot about him in the future, not only in Tennessee, but all across the country. Good thing he came back to help out quarterback Streeter that time because Marcus Jackson was in hot pursuit. He was going to nail him. No score. And this time, Willie Galt's going to go the other way. Split wide to the left, and Hancock comes to the right, and up over the ball is Lee North, number 73, out of Tucker, Georgia. Streeter looking, throwing on the run. Ooh, almost a super catch by Hubert Simpson coming out of the backfield, but he couldn't quite control it. Kind of a kind of a shame, Earl, because uh, that time Simpson was wide open. It was just a poorly thrown pass by Streeter. Threw it behind him and with too much steam. So Simpson and company go out of the ball game, and the punting unit comes on, and going back deep is number 48, Dave Rutherford, a freshman from Tampa, Florida, and Johnny Warren will kick it away for Tennessee. No score. We're seven minutes, 36 seconds away from halftime in Tennessee. Maybe hit with a five-yard delay. Talking about last year's ball game, and Stanford was very sluggish in the first half. And then Steve Dills led an unbelievable second-half comeback as an illegal procedure called, not delay of the game, against uh, Tennessee. Anyway, Dills came back and helped produce 25 points as Stanford stunned Georgia's Bulldogs 25 to 22. What a wild finish that one was. And they've all been like that, seems like, Don, in this one. I tell you what, we're going to have to have some action here in the second half. We'll talk to them and make them average that 57 <laughs> points here. You're really after me, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, we need it. Uh, <laughs> I, I was saying, as Warren gets ready to punt it away again, I was saying that uh, I thought these two teams were so explosive we'd come back with that 57-point average, Don, so I don't think so. Warren gets it away after a good rush and a fair catch call for and taken by Rutherford on the 25-yard line. Well, punt returns were a nemesis for Purdue until Rutherford took over, but he gets no run back on this one. That was a 26-yard kick. We've got a timeout with 7 minutes, 23 seconds to go in the first half. We'll be back right after these messages. Mislin Purdue. All right. <laughs> Glad to have you all here. A lot of Purdue fans came down, of course, and many came from Tennessee for this ball game as Purdue goes to the attack and to the running game to the 34-yard line with uh, Mike Augustiniak carrying the ball. And the tackle made by Roland James. <laughs> yes, sir, we always admit those mistakes. Jim Young, head coach of Purdue. Recruited Mark Herman, and Herman hands off to Augustiniak, who goes to the 39, where he is stopped by Lamont Holt, number 47, a sophomore from Hampton, Virginia, a linebacker. Oh, talking about uh, Jim Young. You know, he came to Purdue three years ago, and Mark Herman was one of the most sought-after quarterbacks in America. And Mark Herman took a look at the Arizona film. He wanted to see what kind of offense that Jim Young caught, and he liked it that I'm going to Purdue. First and ten. Augustiniak again. Augustiniak on a slant across the 45, but they're going to mark him as he slid from about the 44. Brad White, number 90, made the tackle, the defensive right tackle for the ball. Looks like the boiler makers, Merle, have uh, settled down and decided that they're going to establish a running game. Mike Augustiniak, we're looking at there, has carried the last three times. Boiler makers have not been shut out in their last 29 games. And of course, when you got a gunslinging quarterback like Herman, well, you figure you're going to score. There's a dive tackle with Augustiniak banging his way into Tennessee territory for a first down at the 48 yard line. Kenny Jones, number 99, who came up with a big fumble recovery in the end zone to stop Purdue from getting a touchdown back in the first quarter, made the tackle. 
First down for the Boilermakers on the 48-yard line of the Volunteers. Both these teams have rich traditions in football. Boilers go Augie. Lots of banners out here tonight. Herman with some time. Herman going long for Burrow, and he's got him. And his old high school teammate in his roomie takes the ball down to about the 17-yard line. Bart Burrow hauls him in reception. He's not the quickest guy, but he's got great hands, and he runs good patterns. A lot like Freddie Belitnikoff, quarterback, Herman dropping back, looking for his favorite receiver, Burrow. These guys were high school teammates on the basketball championship there in Indiana in 1976. 33-yard pickup, and Brad White is limping off the field for Tennessee, and Bill Christian comes in to replace him. We have five minutes and 36 seconds to go in the first half, and no score. The ball is on the Tennessee 17. McCall and Macon are now the running backs. Harris and Smith are split wide. To the run. That's Macon. Macon. Getting a lot of that yardage on his own is inside the 10, now near the 7, and Roland James, 14. The free safety has to make the tackle. Good inside move that time by Macon, doing a fine job of running. Ran for 740 yards, primarily an inside runner. That's where he, his long suit really is. And he got enough for a first down, and it's goal to go coming up. are red, Viva La Blue, Boilers and Oilers are the best on Ms. Lou. Howard Davis. And Tennessee has just taken a timeout. Timeout with 5.27 to go in the first half here in the Astrodome, and there's no score. All right, Purdue on the move again. Purdue drives have carried inside the enemy's 10-yard line 37 times this year, and the Boilermakers have scored on 33 of those possessions. 32 field goals and a field goal. Now they've got first and goal to go. And Purdue puts in the goal line defense and they stop Augustiniak just about at the line of scrimmage. The charge led by Charles Gillespie, number 75, the nose tackle. And you're seeing number 61 get up, Chris Bolton, the linebacker, a junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. So this time the Boilermakers are denied by the Tennessee defense. Purdue has picked up a lot of yardage. They've got 132 yards rushing. They've got 107 passing. All of that, though, has been at midfield, and the only thing that counts is once you cross that goal line. Well, we were one down ahead of ourselves. We said first down. That was the first down. And Jim Young pleased about that. Jim Young has uh, really turned the Purdue fans on all around the country with this football team of his, as is Johnny Majors of Tennessee. Augustine, Augustiniak, rather, McCall of the running back split. They're into a pro set. This is McCall cutting back. McCall, touchdown, getting the last two yards on his own. Absolutely refusing to go down. Danny Spradlin, number 50, the linebacker, had a hold of him, but he just kept plugging away. McCall shows a lot of determination. He's primarily a cutback runner from what we've seen here this evening. Uh, we're going to see him cut back inside the grain there, and you're going to see him get hit short of the goal line right there. Really takes a lick, but does a good job of spinning his body out. Number 13, Ben McCall going in for the Boilermakers. And so Purdue is on the scoreboard. And McCall, who had 148 yards against Indiana in the finale, scores the first touchdown, and Purdue is on the scoreboard. And Siebel is, Siebel rather, is 31 out of 35, and he's now 32 out of 36 in the PAD, PAD, PAD department, that is. So with five minutes and a second left to go in the first half, the Boilermakers have finally scored against this stubborn Tennessee defense, a team that really hit, loaded with rugged, hard-nosed kids, the kind that have played for the ball for years and years. Looking at it again, McCall now has 55 yards on eight carries. You're seeing him cut inside there. Gained 148 yards in Indiana's finale uh, this year. Fine effort. 148-yard effort against Indiana this year in the last game of the season. So Purdue is on top by a score of 7-0. And 
and the Boilermakers, who finished the year with a 9-2 record and are playing in their third bowl game, the Rose Bowl, the Peach Bowl, and now the Blue Bonnet Bowl, are getting ready as John Simel will kick it off. The victory tonight in the Blue Bonnet would give Purdue its first 10 victory season in history. Look at the Purdue flying chicken, will you? <laughs> Trying to make it to the top. Yeah, he's carrying the Purdue colors right up there at the top of the Astrodome. I think he's trying to go to the house. He was looking for a way to get out. Gary Moore, 33. Anthony Hancock, 28, are deep for Tennessee. And it's going to be Hancock at about the 8. To the 15, he stumbles. He was losing his footing, but he managed to dive to the 20-yard line. And Seibel was right down the field. Kind of helped put the nails in. 7 nothing Purdue. So Seibel gets credit for the tackle. And Johnny Majors paces the sideline. Coaches have a tendency to do that, don't they? Jimmy Streeter has Simpson and Moore as the running back. And it's Simpson to the 23, brought down by Kevin Moss, 58, who's back in there, along with Tom Kingsbury, number 15. Moss was injured earlier, but he's back now at the linebacker spot on the left side. Hubert Simpson, who rushed for 792 yards all together this year. Must have been some performance against Notre Dame when he scored four TDs. Mm -hmm. They beat Notre Dame 40 to 18. It is second down, seven. Purdue, 220 yards offense, Tennessee, 46. Slot right for Tennessee. Streeter throwing in complete, intended for Reggie Harper, number 85. He's got it through behind him there. Reggie Harper, the all-Southeast Conference selection at tight end from Hartsville, Tennessee, a junior, lettered twice. This defensive unit, the junk defense of Purdue, if you will, led by Kevin Motts and company. Motts is probably... Uh, the toughest player on this defensive unit. He calls the defensive signals. There's no way they're going to keep him out of here tonight. The Traders now attempted 11, completed four for 34 yards, one interception. Galled in motion back to the left side. Traders got a chance to run the football. Look at the move he puts on. Dives out across the 30 for a first down. Marcus Jackson, 77, and Tina Turner, 85. Stopped Jimmy Streeter, but not until he picks up a first down. He rushed for 377 yards this year, scoring seven touchdowns rushing, nine by throwing the football, and Mox is hurt again. There's the time, 4.08 to go in the first half, and Purdue leading by a score of 7 to nothing. I think Streeter scrambling and running on that intended passing play is an indication of how good Purdue's defensive ball club is playing. And when your quarterback starts scrambling, you're in trouble. We're looking at quarterback Jimmy Streeter there, and we're seeing the injured man, number 58, Mott, being helped off the side of the field there. He went out once before, came back. All-time leading tackler with 283 solo, 234 counting all of them. You know, Jimmy Streeter knows what an injury is, too, because he missed a couple. In fact, he missed the Ole Miss game and the Kentucky game after hurting his knee against Notre Dame, but he's back, and he sends Galt wide to the right side, and Hancock splits it up. Marks is down as a linebacker for Purdue for Mott. For, uh, Mott. And was the play over? It was not. Galt was the receiver, fumbled the football, and 43, Tim Sinop was all over it. Wayne Smith, number 44, made the hit, and Sinop made the recovery. Quarterback Jimmy Strader, who's had a lot of them go off bounds, this time he's on right number 26. Willie Galt gets him right there, 44. Wayne Smith hits him, and the guy picking it up is Mike Sinney. Make that 10 Sinop, number 43, recovering it for the Boilermakers. So Purdue has the football again. Can the Boilermakers take it in before the first half with 3.47 to go? Irvin goes to the run. That's McCall, who's done an excellent job with moves like this. And he fights his way for 10 yards at the 25. Roland James, number 14, the All-American safety, has to make the tackle. You don't see the old limp leg much anymore, but look at number 13, McCall there. Jukes the man inside, goes around him, lays him grab in air, puts another good move on. He's finally going to run into a man that he cannot juke. Gets away from another one. The one he cannot juke is Roland James, number 14, the great safety cornerback there for the Volunteers. 
Okay, first down on the 25 of Tennessee. Jones slaps to the 20, brought down by Roland James again. He is all over the field. Gain of almost five yards. Time remaining, 3.13 to go in the first half. Purdue leading by a score of 7 0. McCall is in. Wally Jones goes out for Purdue. Wally Jones, the sophomore out of Detroit, Michigan. Jim Young, he also faces the sideline. McCall on the receiving end this time, and a first down as Pookie has to make the tackle. Interesting the way the Boilermakers have changed up their attack. They came out throwing the ball quite a bit earlier with Herman putting the ball in the air to Burl on a number of occasions. Now they started running the game with McCall doing an excellent job. And once again, Herman's gone back to the air all successfully. Well, the Boilermaker cheerleaders warm it up as the Boilermakers get closer at the 12-yard line with a first down. Tennessee has not been known as a good pass rushing team and splitting wide to the left side in motion. Harris and Herman to throw and throws the ball. Touchdown. So the combination of Mark Herman and Bart Burrell come up with another touchdown. That's Burrell's second touchdown reception of the season. Quarterback Herman just does a reverse pivot. Watch how he turns right there at the line of scrimmage, straightens up, and he's looking for his man Burrell who's just running a slant in. Good pass there, fed it right inside the defender. Good catch also by Burroughs. And so the Boilermakers do score again here. No defense against the perfect pass, and that was just a perfect pass by quarterback Herman. Now the extra point try coming up, and it's popped right through there by John Cottle. That's his second of the night, and his 33rd out of 37 this year. Five plays, 35 yards, and the Boilermakers score again. 2.27 to go in the first half, and Purdue has a 14 to nothing lead. And Merle, you may be right after all. They may get up to that 57 point, whatever they've been scoring here in the Astrodome at the Blue Bonnet Bowl for the last, what, last six years. Looking at it again, no defense, like I said, against a perfect pass. That time quarterback Mark Herman was right on with Burrell. It was well defended, but you can't beat perfection. You know, one of the things that has been so consistent here in the Blue Bonnet Bowl over the years is the second half comeback by the underdog team, the underdog at the half. It'll be interesting to watch the second half. Right now, quarterback Mark Herman's completed 10 out of 16 attempts for 127 yards and one TD. No interception. He's been rushing pretty well. He's minus 10 rushing. Uh, quarterbacks are really good on their feet. <laughs> Going back deep for Tennessee, Gary Moore, 33, Anthony Hancock, 28, and John Seibel will kick it off. Gary Moore, he can really turn it on. And let's see if the ball goes to him, and if he can. Ball is kicked out of bounds. So we'll do it over with 2.27 to go in the first half. Talking about Gary Moore, who is one of the deep men, and, and every time you look back there and you see him, you think of that 98-yard touchdown run against Auburn. Gary is a senior from Decatur, Tennessee. The Boilermaker fans and the Tennessee fans are very competitive here tonight, vocally, and that's good. Purdue Boilermakers out of West Lafayette, Indiana, 43,000 Roman. Quite a basketball team, too, this year. Lee Rose. By the way, I wonder how our old buddy Leo Perto is tonight. <laughs> I understand. Uh, you were the one that did it, Merle, but I understand they accepted it well and said, welcome home, Leo. What about all those banners? Well, I'll tell you, I had a cut on the banners. Okay. We had agents back there putting those things together. Uh, Lee Corso did a super job out in the Holiday Bowl. This is more. Let's see what he can do. That's a 20. Covered pretty well. Brought down to the 22, possibly the 23. And the tackler is number 26, Larry Perry. So it's 14 to nothing. Purdue leading Tennessee as Jimmy Streeter brings his offensive unit on. And the specialty team 
goes back to watch. 2.22 remaining in the first half. Purdue is rolled for 255 yards offense to Tennessee's 58. Looking at the clock there with 2.22 left, the Volunteers are going to have to come to life. Nothing has come easy for them offensively. Streeter on the keep. Streeter is cut down at the 29 by Ken Lauschen, the all-Big Ten middle guard who makes the stop. Tim Seneff, the strong safety, also up there. Clock running near the two-minute mark, and it's second down four. Streeter got six. The uh, Boilermaker defenders have held six of their 11 posts to under 100 yards rushing and two of the 11 to less than 100 yards passing. Everybody thinks of Purdue as an offensive team, but look at this defense go against Simpson now. Led by Turner, Jackson, Lauschen, Clark, Kingsbury, and a cast of thousands. And when you mention Kingsbury, I can't help but think that that guy's only 5'10", 202 pounds. He's a defensive end, but does an excellent job there for Purdue and their junk defense. Third down three, and a minute and a half to go in the first half. Bill Ingram is in. He split to the left. Jim Young, of course, was an assistant at Michigan. He coached in the first game of the decade, and this is the last one. That's Streeter. Streeter diving has the first down about the 36, and is brought down and covered by James Looney, 59. Minute 12 left. I better explain that. He was an assistant coach for Bo Schimbecker at Michigan, and Bo suffered a mild heart attack at the uh, Rose Bowl, and Jim Young took over as head coach. That was the first game of this decade. Tennessee has called a timeout. That was the first game of this decade, and this is the last one. So Jim Young has seen a lot of history. And Jimmy Streeter is a little winded out there on that last run. Uh, I don't think he was really ducking under anybody for the first down yardage. He was trying to keep from getting decapitated by James Looney there for Purdue, who was in hot pursuit. He came in head to high and wanted to see if he could take his helmet or helmet and something else off with it. Back in Silva, North Carolina, they called Jimmy the Silva Street. His brother's not too bad either. Back there, there's a lot of good streeter football players well he's got a brother in high school i guess that's even supposed to be greater than jimmy well there's always that guy coming up purdue has won 13 consecutive times in its black home jerseys by the way they are the home team as they won the flip of the coin they've won 12th grade at home so they're rolling right along and they're feeling at home here in the ash dome leading by a score of 14 to nothing Tennessee with a first down on the ball, 36-yard line. Simpson has rushed eight times for 26 yards. As the balls check out of the huddle and are ready to roll. A minute 12 to go in the first half. They're down by 14. Ingram is put to the right side. Streeter going for the bomb the other way. I thought we might have a flag. We do. Talk the intended receiver. There is the flag. Marcus McKinney and Bill Kay had the coverage, and it was just one of those trip situations. It was inadvertent, but you could almost, well, you'll see it right now. Quite a foot race going on there between 28 Hancock, and you're going to look right. Well, I'm not sure that I saw anything hit or not, but the guy called defensively was John Macon. Uh, make that K. Yeah it, pass yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's going to go the other way, I guess. And Johnny Majors, a little bit upset about that one. So it's offensive pass interference as they got tangled up a bit. Offensive pass interference as Guy Gibbs, the referee, and that's a loss of a down also. Going back to the 20, it's second and 25. A minute and six seconds to go in the first half. Purdue on top by a score of 14 to nothing after a scoreless first period. Merle Harmon, Don Perkins, and Howard David wishing you all a happy new year coming up. There's that jump defense. Trying to confuse and does as Ken Lauschen, the nose tackle, put a real sock on Hubert Simpson. Eesh. I could feel that one. How about you? Now it's third down 27. Ken Lauschen, a big fella, he uh, bench presses over 400 pounds. 
twice at all conference selection. Purdue takes a timeout to stop the clock with 51 seconds left. While we're looking at Lausch in there, he's also a near straight A student in civil engineering, so he gets the job done on and off the field. Well, he engineered that defensive effort I pretty good. So. The ball at the 19 yard line, third down 27 coming up for the Tennessee Ball. Fans of all ages here tonight on this New Year's Eve. The Blue Bonnet Bowl is a New Year's Eve tradition in Houston and now all across the country. I think the thing that Johnny Major feared most is happening out here in the first half of play. He didn't fear quarterback Mark Herman so much, although Herman has been his normal effective self, but he feared the defense of the Purdue Boilermakers, and they have certainly stymied the Volunteers' offensive attack. The Volunteers have never gotten anything going so far. The Greater Houston Bowl Association, which presents the Blue Bonnet Bowl, directed by board chairman Ray Driver, Vince Buckley, the president, Jim Morris, executive vice president, Lee Tucker, Bruce Conway, Weldon Humble. Weldon Humble, boy, there's a great football name out of the past. And executive director, Tex Thornton. Boy, what a show they put on. And Claude Clements, who hosts the big barbecue at the Regal Ranch for each of these teams. Gold and Hancock, they're split wide for Tennessee. They're in the eye. That's Hubert Simpson, brought down by Calvin Clark. At the 22, Mike Mark, 62, is in on the stop, and Purdue, I believe, is going to stop that clock again. Ball at the 23. Purdue takes the timeout now with 43 seconds to go. They want to get another shot. They want to get another shot. That's Joe Abazino. Uh, no, no, I beg your pardon. I thought I saw Joe coming up in the shot. John Warren will come and do the kicking as we look across the way. That was uh, Leon uh, Burnett, defensive coordinator of... Uh, Purdue. And at halftime, Howard, we've got some super things coming up involving uh, Hertz. And our number one awards, which are presented annually to the outstanding high school athlete in each state in the union. And we'll be presenting a special feature on that. And a little bit later on on the telecast, we'll be presenting the Trainer of the Year Award in the four categories of pro, college, junior college, and high school. We're talking about Joe Avazino a moment ago. He's been a long-time associate of Johnny Majors. As back deep now for Purdue goes Dave Rutherford and doing the kicking, Johnny Warren. Joe Avazino, by the way, is going to be the new head coach at Oregon State. What a super guy. Ooh, they almost blocked it. And Rutherford will let it roll. It takes a good Tennessee roll down to the 34, down to the 33 as Purdue went for the block. And number 44. Uh, 34 Marcus uh, McKinney and number 44 Wayne Smith were really flying looking at the time there with 30 seconds left it was a 45 yard kick that time by the volunteers but primarily because the Boilermakers were trying to block it 14 nothing Purdue the Boilermakers have the ball it is marked officially on the 32 yard line of Purdue and here come the Boilers Led by Pete Quinn at center, Schwann and Hall the guards, Field and McKenzie the tackles, Smith and Burrell are wide, or Burrell rather. And on the handoff, it is Macon right up the middle. Macon to midfield, Macon just across midfield of the 49, brought down by Brad White with 23 seconds to go. And Purdue, let's see, I believe has taken a timeout. They get one anyway, uh, at least a temporary timeout to move the yardsticks after the first down. But the Boilermakers take their last timeout of the half now with 23 seconds left to go in the first half. And Mark Herman is over to the sideline to talk to Jim Young. Jim Young and his staff are a very coordinated unit. Jim has had five winning seasons in seven years, the head coach at Arizona after being an assistant coach uh, to Bo Schimbeckler at Michigan. And Jim Young, by the way, what is he, 42 years old now? 43 years old, and just a grandfather. So Purdue, with 23 seconds left to play in the first half of the 14-0 lead, and Raymond Smith splits out wide to the right, the ball's near midfield, just across the line in Tennessee territory, as Vermin will operate out of the shotgun. And he has gone down the sideline for Jones, and Jones tries to get out of bounds, and apparently does at the 22-yard line of 
Tennessee. Pass protection, just great for quarterback Mark Herman that time. Jones finding himself wide open, wanted to get out of bounds so bad that he stumbled. And Purdue, with no huddle, is ready to move again. 15 seconds remaining in the first half. The clock starts to roll. And Herman going to the air, throwing to the sideline the ball. And I believe he's out of bounds when he caught the ball. So that stops the clock with eight seconds left. Mark Burrow covered by Danny Martin. And here comes the field goal unit on as Burrow tried to pull off one of his circus catches, but not quite that time. So the field goal unit is aboard for Purdue and Johnny Seibel who kicked a 29-yarder to beat Michigan, and a two out of six this year will boot it from the 28, making it a 38-yard effort. And on the angle shot, he's got the distance, and it is not good. It is off to the left, as Bart Burrell held for him, and Seibel's kick had the distance, had the height, but not the accuracy. So we're down to three seconds to go, and Tennessee will probably run the clock now to finish up the first half. I would imagine so, Merle. I, uh, you often think that a quarterback's going to put the ball in the air and go for the big one, but the way the game has been going and quarterback Jimmy Street has had so much trouble trying to throw here this first half, I think they'll keep it on the ground going at halftime, and Johnny Majors is going to try to figure out what they can do with that boilermaker defense. So Jimmy Streeter sends Ingram wide to the left, Hancock to the right side. No, sir. They're going to give it another shot. And Streeter cuts it loose. We... Well, do we have a flag <laughs> down on that one or not? Wayne Smith was over there on the cover. He's no flag is thrown on a play that ends the first half as they collided. And both went down. So that's the end of the first half. With the score, Purdue 14 and Tennessee nothing. Stay tuned for our exciting halftime show after these messages. The Blue Bonnet Bowl of the score at halftime is Purdue 14, Tennessee nothing. A lot of fans from Purdue and Tennessee both. Total numbering near 20,000 have joined as part of this crowd of near 50,000 here in the eighth wonder of the world, the Houston Astrodome. Let's go to Mizlou Network Television Control, where Don Tolleson is standing by. Hello again, Don Tollefson and Mizzou Network Control. You know, as a sportscaster, I sometimes get upset by the fact that we seem to spend so much time talking about big-name pro and college athletes that we overlook the best high school athletes who are really the backbone of American sports. Well, today we have a tribute to those high school athletes. The Hertz number one award winners are brought to you by Hertz, where the winners rent. For the second year in a row, the Hertz Corporation is recognizing the best athletic performance by a high school athlete in every state in America. The high school athletes who were so awarded that honor have been brought together in New York City again, and veteran broadcaster Chris Schenkel was there to honor them. I've never had more exciting football games than to do the games that he starred in. So how about a great welcome to your host, number 32. O.J. Simpson. O.J.? I want to congratulate all you recipients of the Hertz Number One Award. Uh, you don't know what a pleasure it is for me to be here. I don't think you all realize what a sports fan, myself, Mr. Olson, Tom, Ken, we're all big sports fans, and I think one of the big pleasures of being a sports fan and one of the nicest things is to follow a person's career. I can't tell you the thrill I got uh, on New Year's Day. I was at the Rose Bowl, and I looked down on the uh, field, and I saw two people, uh, Butch Wolfall from Michigan and uh, Mr. Allen from uh, uh, USC, Marcus Allen, uh, two people who I had met six months earlier here at the Hertz Number One Award, you know, and you feel a little cocky. Later on, these guys may go on and, and do big and and college sports and become big stars in professional sports and and you know you can tell people at the barbershop what are you talking about man i knew that dude when he was in high school i knew him before anybody knew him around the country always be positive you know you you look in pro sports and as i as we spoke of this morning it's it's easy to make an excuse you know i've been in pro football seven years i played for two coaches that i thought were adequate head coaches 
you know. So it's easy. I could say that everywhere. I could complain that the coach isn't good, that this lineman isn't good. It's easy to complain, you know. It is easy to make excuses. You know, you look around the league and you see the people you really enjoy uh, to watch perform. And I bet you they're all positive people. They're always talking positive. It's good for your teammates. It sets an example for them. It's good for your coaches. And it's good for the fans. And no matter what you say, we are performers. I mean, it, 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 we are in the business of entertainment. I mean, you're here because you provided the biggest thrill in your state this past season. So try to be positive at all times. Try to be positive, work hard, and set goals for yourself. And I'm a, little, I'm a little selfish about this, that I'll be able to enjoy your careers. Once again, congratulations, and uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing you on the two. Thank you. Words of wisdom from O.J. Simpson. His playing days may be over, but his influence on young athletes will continue for years and years. And if you are a young athlete, I hope you take his words of advice to heart. As O.J. mentioned, one of our great thrills is to watch what the Hertz number one award winners do when they move on to college. And right now, we want to check in with four of our number one award winners as they begin their collegiate careers. Our California Award winner, Jill Sterkel from Wilson High School in Hacienda Heights, is now at the University of Texas. She was a member of the United States Olympic team at Montreal, and there she won a relay gold medal. She was considered a strong bet to repeat as a gold medal winner in the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow. She holds a number of American interscholastic records. Our North Carolina winner, Dominic Wilkins from Washington High School, a basketball player who once scored 46 points and grabbed 30 rebounds in a single game. He's now at Georgia. Our Texas winner, Michael Carter from Thomas Jefferson High School in Dallas, is now at SMU, and he set the national high school record of 77 feet in the 12-pound shot back in May of 1979. He's also a football player. Our West Virginia winner, Kurt Warner from Pineville High School, and he has become an outstanding running back in short order for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Once in high school, in a single game, he ran for 424 yards and eight touchdowns and only 29 carries, and that was in one high school game, Mr. Kurt Warner of Penn State. I trust that most of you are uh, enjoying your New Year's Eve, whether you're at a friend's home or your own and you have company over yourselves and enjoying this Blue Bonnet Bowl New Year's Eve tradition here at the Astrodome where the score at halftime is Purdue 14 and Tennessee nothing. Our silly first half highlights and really two scores kind of says it all. First half, a very uh, scoreless first half. Second half, Purdue got it underway. A 72-yard drive in just eight plays. And Ben McCall will get the call from quarterback Mark Herman from seven yards out. At the 5-0-1 mark, second quarter, Ben McCall in for the touchdown. The extra point was good, and Purdue at this point led 7 to nothing. Two and a half minutes later, the passing tandem of Mark Herman and uh, his old-time friend Mark Burrell got together. A 35-yard drive in just five plays capped off by Mark Herman looking for Burrell and finding him in the end zone. A 12-yard touchdown pass at the 227 mark. Made the score 14 to nothing, of course, with the extra point good. And that's where we are at halftime. Those are our Sony first half highlights. We look for exciting action coming up in the third quarter. So be sure and stay tuned. Merle Harmon and Don Perkins will be bringing you all the action in the third and fourth quarter of what uh, I think is going to be a really exciting second half. Remember last year when Stanford came from behind to beat Georgia in a thrilling uh, second half comeback after being uh, down 22 to nothing at one point and winning it 25 to 22. Some of the pretty girls. Always like to have pretty girls looking over your shoulder. Here at the uh, Astrodome, the Purdue marching band, over 400 in attendance as part of 8,000 Purdue people that came from West Lafayette, Indiana to be here to meet Tennessee uh, this evening in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. We'll have the start of the third quarter in this match between Purdue and Tennessee right after we pause for these messages from our participating sponsors. Merle Herman, Don Perkins, and Howard David with you once again as both teams have returned to the field here at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. And the Purdue Boilermakers 
who were denied a touchdown with a fumble in the first quarter when the ball rolled into the end zone, came back to score twice in the second period. They've denied, uh, they have dominated the game statistically, having collected 307 yards total offense to 71 for Tennessee. 19 first downs to five. And Don, the Purdue offense has been very balanced. As you look at the rushing yardage at 151 and the passing yardage of 156. Unfortunately, I'm sure the volunteers feel their uh, offensive attack has been balanced too. They've got 36 yards rushing and 35 yards passing. And both of those were things that Johnny Majors was concerned about for the volunteers. He was concerned just how strong that Boilermaker defense might be. And they are tough out there in the first half of tonight's contest. And so Tennessee will be receiving the kickoff here in the third quarter. Tennessee sending back number 28, Anthony Hancock, 33, Gary Moore, and 26, Willie Gold. And seeing the ball up, or ready to is John Seibel to kick it off. The Boilermakers going for their 10th one of the year. They had big victories this year over... Notre Dame at 28-22 and Michigan 24-21. Somebody in the press box said at halftime that Purdue left too many men on base in the first half. They had all, all the opportunities to do a lot of scoring and only have 14 points on the board. But right now, I don't think Jim Young is going to complain too much about that because his defense has been so strong. And here we go. And it will not be run back. Gary Moore will down at the end zone. So Jimmy Streeter will bring his offensive unit on. Now, Don... You've gone through all these halftime meetings when your team has been behind, when your collegiate career in Mexico and then with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, how much coaching is done in there at halftime? Well, there's not really much coaching there can be done, but you've got to psych the guys up. Uh, what's happening out there is the game's being won or lost on the part of the volunteers on the line of scrimmage. We're looking at head coach Johnny Majors there. All-American tailback at the University of Tennessee. He was a great one. Now he's got to do a great job of coaching. These teams have to come back. Streeter rolling, looking. Throw it. Oh, tucks it back in. And is nailed by Keena Turner. He dropped the football, apparently. So a loss of two, and it'll be second down 12. By the way, Kevin Mutz, the linebacker, and an outstanding linebacker for Purdue will not be back in the second half. He has a strained knee. He will not return. In fact, he went out. He came back in. Then he got hurt again. Gold is coming wide to the left side. Looney and Marks are now the linebackers for Purdue. Streeter, the option, the pitch. Barry breaks the tackle. And gets out across the 25 to about the 26. Calvin Clark, number 94, and James Looney, 59, nailed him. A gain of almost five. It'll be third down five coming up for Purdue. Or rather for uh, Tennessee. James Berry there trying to go wide. You see number 85, Keenan Turner there, pull that collar, that neck support off of Berry. Jimmy Streeter, 6 out of 14 in the first half, 35 yards in the air, and an interception. Streeter, not quite for a first down. Calvin Clark had the pursuit and finally pulled him down from behind. Clark almost got him for a loss, but Streeter ran out of that, but he did fail to get the first down. So Jimmy Streeter... The Silva Streak from Silva, North Carolina, who scored 16 touchdowns this year. Leaves the field, Johnny Warren comes in, and that's Dave Rutherford going back as a single safety, and Johnny Warren will kick it away. Warren pops it, a shanks it, kind of. And let's see where they mark it. They're going to mark it on the 43-yard line of Tennessee. So Johnny Warren did not come up with one of his patented good kicks that time. It just simply shanked off. And so Purdue comes out of it with great field position, a 13-yard kick. Frankers on the 43-yard line of Tennessee. Mark Kerman at quarterback going to the running game. And Ben McCall, who had a good first half, carries it down to the 40. And he is brought down by Steve Davis, number 57, the senior from Knoxville. 
who is a defensive end. The ball is marked in the 41. Gain of two to be second down eight. Johnny Majors was concerned about the Boilermaker defense, uh, whether they would be able to penetrate it, and he had reason to be concerned. The Volunteers have had problems. Jim Young was concerned about the quickness uh, on, the, on the part of uh, Tennessee. That has not been a factor so far. Now in motion comes Harris. McCall play action fake. Herman to the air going for Burl. He's got it, runs the pattern, and is out of bounds on the 23, chased out by Danny Martin. The right cornerback from McMin uh, McMinnville, Tennessee. Volunteers were blitzing on this one, and when you get a blitz, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage deep. Bart Burl, a defensive, uh, meets the defensive back. He's working on number 23 there. Is uh, going to pick up that name on 23 that he's working against. But anyway, Burl did pick him off. 15-yard gain that time for the Boilermaker. Now in motion comes Ben McCall. Meekin. Meekin goes inside the 20 to about the 17. Brian Ingram, number 84, the defensive right end on the stop. John Macon, a junior from Marion, Indiana, rushed for 425 yards. He's number 37. Well, let's see. We had a Burles total. He had, he's got five receptions now. 15 yards on that one. He had uh, 81, 96 yards for Burles in receptions. Then five from Herman. Ben McCall in motion. Pitch comes to Macon. Inside the 15 to the 14. Steve Davis makes the stop for the Volunteers. Now I'm kind of surprised that uh, as we've got another injury here for Purdue, and that looks like Macon is down this time. I'm kind of surprised that Purdue has not thrown the ball more tonight, really, though. But I mean, again, so much emphasis has been put on uh, Purdue's passing game that Jim Young knows that you've got to have both sides up to get the job done. And of course, they have run the ball quite a bit tonight. Jim's in his third year at Purdue as we see if they've got a first down or not. First year, he was five and six, then nine, two and one. This year, nine and two. Purdue has been packing them in, though. They the last uh, their home attendance has been a record for each of the three years under Jim Young. And of course, Tennessee is adding on to its magnificent stadium. They're going to be drawing 95,000 a game next year. Chris Bolton is in now for Tim Irwin. Uh, check that. Chris Bolt is in there as a linebacker for Tennessee. Two tight ends. Tom Barr is in there now. And it is McCall and Ben trying to go over the top for the first down. And he's got the job done. Chris Bolton, 61, made the tackle. So the Boilermakers have moved to the 11-yard line with 11 minutes, 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. And Purdue leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Purdue coaches saw Bart Burrell and John Macon in the same prep all-star game and signed them later. Nobody else seemed to be interested. Well, a little confusion, and quickly Purdue calls a timeout. They they were confused on the set. Dave Young was set right, Burrell left, and all of a sudden they decided they better switch. And that was enough to cause a timeout. We've got a timeout with 11.44 to go in the third quarter. Purdue leading by 14 to nothing. Back after these messages from your local station. Purdue with the football. And it is Herman looking to throw. And he cuts it loose. And guess who's there this time? Dave Young, but it was no good. Bill Bates was back there on the coverage. Dave Young, the Big Ten's leading receiver with 51 catches for 512 yards and eight touchdowns this year. Thought he should have had that one. Burley caught a pass. He caught a pass. Uh, well, we hear from uh, Howard David a little later here. Second down coming up and 10 yards to go. Raymond Smith is split to the right side. to the run to Ben McCall and a great defensive effort by Steve Davis number 57 who cut in there and knocked him down so McCall goes down for a loss 
McCall been picking up quite a bit of yardage for the Boilermakers on the ground. The ground game along with the air game has been doing spectacular. Here McCall is trying to go wide. You're going to see Steve Davis right there shooting through. Number 14 also in the action is Roland James, the defensive back, coming up to make sure. Tim Irvin has been in there for a couple of plays. Danny Spradlin is back as a linebacker for Tennessee as Harris puts to the left and a shotgun for the first time in the second half. On third down, Irvin throwing, and there's Young. Touchdown, Dave Young, his ninth touchdown race up to the year. And the big 6'6 junior from Akron, Ohio, is a very happy man now after he had not been able to catch that last one. He had this one all the way. Not only does he have the range and good hands, but he's got good footwork. You're looking at a 6'6 receiver there getting downfield. Quarterback Mark Herman has to work a little bit to get a chance to throw to it. But watch the footwork right there. Getting those toes inbounds there for the catch. So the extra point try to come up now. John Seibel with Bart Burrell holding. And Seibel pops it high and gets his third PAT of the night. Ten minutes, 52 seconds left to play in the third quarter, and Purdue now owns a 21 to nothing lead over the Tennessee Volunteers. So the Vols will see if they can come back and get an offense going now against this Boilermaker defense, which has really been tough tonight. Certainly has, and with that catch, uh, that tied uh, that tied Young with ex oiler Jim Byrne with 17 for career TDs at Purdue. Quarterback Mark Herman there had to roll out to find himself a little bit more time. Got a little bit of pressure from the Vols that time. Not a great deal, but fine footwork there by Young staying in bounds. All right, going back deep for Tennessee is Anthony Hancock number 28 and the kick for Purdue is John Seibel. Gary Moore will also be back for Tennessee. Well there's a squiver and it's covered by the volunteers at the 22-yard line and number 27 for Purdue David Hill went flying down the field on that coverage. Sumter fell on the football for Tennessee. So Johnny Majors falls. I'll tell you one thing about the volunteers. You visit with these coaches and with the players, and they are just loaded with enthusiasm for the future. And Johnny just can't wait for, you know, to have the kind of football team that he's been used to having. He's got a rebuilding job to do, and he knows that his fans are very patient, but still, he's really eager. That's Galt to the right. And Hubert Simpson to about the 24. Mike Marks, 62, the linebacker, stopping the play with Tom Kingsbury, number 15. Well, Mark Herman, after that touchdown pass, is now just two shy, the Big Ten record of 48 by Michigan's Rick Leach. 21-0. Tennessee fans, let's get it going. Second down eight. Jimmy Streeter going long, and he's got a man, and there he is, that's Hancock. Hancock is down into Purdue territory. He is down on the 36-yard line. Bill Kay pulled him down. A beautiful pass play from Jimmy Streeter to Anthony Hancock, and Hancock can really burn you. Looking at it in isolation, the Volunteers really needed this. Anthony Hancock, number 28, doing a down and in there. Gets by the intended receiver, Bill Kay. Excellent pass by Streeter. The Volunteers need a big play like that, 44 yards to make something happen and to come to life in the second half of this game. Well, as we mentioned before, the underdog has always put on a show in the second half. Let's see if Tennessee can keep it moving. They're down 21 to nothing. Dive tackle with Simpson, brought down by James Looney, the linebacker, number 59. Hubert Simpson carrying the ball to the 30 for a five-yard pickup, and it's second down five. And now, after that 44-yard pass play and a five-yard run, all of a sudden, the volunteers seem to really have it cranked up. Gold and Hancock are going to the right side with Gold in the slot. Second and five. 
the option and the pitch. And it's Simpson for a first down all the way down to the 22-yard line. Mike marks the linebacker, makes the tackle. He got almost eight yards on the play, Hubert Simpson, who had some great games for Tennessee this year. Running toward that double slot side this time. Got excellent blocking over there. Simpson doing a great job of running the last two times he carried the ball. Now we've got an injured player for Purdue. Calvin Clark is down. Number 94, the all-Big Ten tackle from Atlanta, Georgia. So Purdue has had uh, its share of injuries so far tonight. Lost Kevin Motts for the evening with a knee injury. That's Calvin Clark that you're looking at there being assisted off. Jimmy Streeter there getting some sidelines instruction. Pass worked real well for him. Now the running game seems to be picking up with Hubert Simpson doing the groundwork. Well, I can only go back to last year, Don, when we were here in Stanford, was shut out in the first half and came back with 25 points in the second half to beat Georgia. The Blue Bonnet Bowl, a New Year's Eve tradition. We're delighted to have you with us from the Astrodome, which will mark its 15th anniversary next year as the eighth wonder of the world. Now these Tennessee fans are really getting it cranked up, and the Purdue fans respond. Up over the ball, Lee North. On the dive, Simpson. Simpson bangs his way down to the 16, and Mike Mark, 62, the linebacker, stops it. That's James Ferry, not Simpson. Jackson helping out of the play. 34 is James Ferry from Natchez, Mississippi, a sophomore, who has averaged 4.4 yards a carry this year and has scored four touchdowns. It'll be second down and five for Tennessee. Here is Jimmy Streeter with his second and five call. This time with Hubert Simpson. Simpson gets inside the 15, and that's all as Tom Kingsbury, 15, and Mike Mark, 62, tackle him there. And it's third down and three. The offensive coordinator of Tennessee is Joe Avizano. I mentioned earlier that he has been together with uh, Johnny Majors since 1969. He was with him at Iowa State, later at Pitt, and uh, also at Tennessee. And, of course, they had some pretty good football players to work with at Pittsburgh, and they've got some good ones at Tennessee and more coming. But Avizano will not be here for that. As the quarterback Breeder fails to pick up yardage, he lost the yard as Marcus Jackson, 77, and Tom Kingsbury, 15, got very rude on that left side and threw him for a loss. It'll be fourth down and five coming up. But we do want to wish Joe Avizano and his wife Diane the very best at Oregon State. They're going out there to rebuild a program. And, of course, Oregon State has had a fine tradition over the years. It's been down. But if anybody can do the job, Joe Avizano can do it. All right, we've got a timeout for Tennessee. And we'll be back right after this. Well, Don Perkins, Tennessee with a fourth down and five. And this is going to be very critical for the balls. They've got to get something out of this. And they're not going to go for a field goal attempt. They know they've got to get a touchdown, uh, keep this drive moving. It's going to be tough. Purdue has been tough defensively. Galton Hancock are wide. Fourth and five. And Streeter on the roll. He throws, and it is intercepted by number 34, Marcus McKenzie, at about the three-yard line. Keena Turner, 85, was putting heat on Streeter, and Marcus McKenzie picked it off. Well, Streeter had no choice. He had to get rid of the ball. He was getting a lot of pressure put on him. Right there, number 85, putting the pressure on. Number 85, Keena Turner, intended receiver downfield. Turner is likely to be a first-round draft in the NFL. Picking that one off was number 34, McKinney. So the Boilermakers stop the drive at the Tennessee Falls. And here come the Boilermakers. Motion to the left, Raymond Smith out of the eye. The fullback, John Macon, bangs right up the middle out to the 10. Brought down by Roland James, the free safety, the All-American from Jamestown, Ohio. Fluttered four years at Tennessee. He got five, it'll be second down five. Purdue has rolled for 355 yards total offense to 142 for the Tennessee ball. Craig Pukey, 44, the linebacker, calls the defensive set. Macon and Jones are the running backs now to the Purdue eye. And Macon, quick hold, quick hit, and a fumble of the football. The whistle may have blown it dead. If it didn't, 
Tennessee has recovered the football, but I thought I heard a whistle blowing the ball dead right after the hit. And we've got an injured volunteer this time. Or is it a Purdue Boilermaker? It's a ball. The attendance uh, here in the Astrodome tonight, 40,542 on this New Year's Eve. This is the 21st Blue Bonnet Bowl. And the games of the past have really been wild. They've been something else. For the fourth straight year, Ms. Lou Television Network proud to present the Nutriment Trainer of the Year Award. Here's Bill Boswell, Vice President of Drackett. The fourth Nutriment Trainer of the Year Award here this evening. And this year's winners are, from the professional division, Jerry Ray, head trainer of the Atlanta Falcons of the NFL. The college division, Joe Geek. Joe is a head trainer for the University of Virginia. And for the junior college division, Bill Chambers, head trainer, Fullerton Junior College, Fullerton, California. And from the high school division, Glenn Snow, Floyd Central High School in New Albany, Indiana. Bill, since you're the president of the National Athletic Training Association this year, I would like to present this check for $5,000 to the association. Thank you very, very much, Bill. The National Athletic Training Association appreciates Nutriment's continued support. Thanks. Our thanks to Bill Boswell, vice president of the Dracket Company, announcing the four winners last week at the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame in Kings Island. And you understand the importance of the trainers. And both the guys in that hit are out of the ball game with injuries as Burrow grabs off another pass for Mark Herman. Bart Burrow brought down by Danny Martin. But Burrow, I tell you, this, this kid makes the, as good a diving catches that you'll ever see, and, and defenders can't do a whole lot about that. We mentioned earlier that he looks a lot like the great pro Freddie Bolitnikov. Just uh, not excessive speed, not great speed, but good hands and great footwork at knowing where that out-of-bounds mark is. 14 yards and a first down. Burrell is now 110 yards and seven catches. Mark Herman, the junior quarterback, sending Smith in motion to the right. And he goes to his tailback, Wally Jones. And Jones whacks up to the 35, brought down by Brian Ingram. The defensive right end, number 84, from Memphis, Tennessee. Wally Jones from Detroit, a sophomore. Mark Herman, number nine, you're looking at him right now, is 6'4", 188 pounds. He threw for 2,074 yards and 13 touchdowns. And he is certainly going to be a leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy next year. In fact, he, many thought that he should have been higher in the voting this year. Herman, he's got Young. Dave Young is on the way, but he doesn't quite have the speed to break it all away. He fumbles the ball with a tackle, and Tennessee recovers. Big Dave Young hauled it in. Steve Davis, 57, came in to make the recovery, and watch this, a 50-yard pickup, but a turnover. Young, who's a 6-6 target, doing a great job getting downfield right there, runs over a would-be pass defender there, makes a nice fingertip catch. He doesn't have the speed to go all the way. You're going to see him get brought down there by number seven, Wilbur Jones. Jones goes for a ride, gets a little help, and right there, the ball squirts loose. As Young goes to the ground, you're going to see it picked up by Steve Davis for the Volunteers. There's Davis going on it. A big break for the Volunteers. And Craig Pookie's hit. Number 44 is what shook that ball loose from Dave Young. And Pookie is another one of those hard-nosed Southeastern Conference football players. But right here is the guy, Steve Davis, who fell on the football. Well, you also have a penalty marker thrown on the plate. and it was a late flag the ball stays with Purdue but I think that penalty was for Pookie's hit well whatever we've got either the defensive, the... defensive units going back on the field for the volunteers either that or the ball dead was dead and the play was called complete maybe that was it So the discussion still goes on. First, it was called a recovery by Tennessee. 
Let's see if we can uh, determine. Now Purdue says they've got the football. Let's see it. Dave Young taking it 50. There's a look at Young going downfield. There's the hit. First by number seven, Jones. Then Pookie comes in. You can see the ball right there. The ball is going loose. You see it bounce off the hip. You can see number 57, Steve Davis there come in to scoop it up right there. Got it clean so far. I don't know what's going on out there, Murray. Well, forget what happened on that end. We finally have it explained now. Roughing the passer, roughing him, Mark Herman. But they sure took a long time to talk about it down at the other end of the field. So they've carried the ball all the way back to the original line of scrimmage. Ball goes to the 49 yard line. And here comes another discussion. Tennessee said, would you mind explaining that, please? To everybody. The uh, officiating crew is out of the Western Athletic Conference, the entire crew. By the way, Merrill Jr. tight end Dave Young of Purdue has caught passes in now 30 straight ball games. And still another year to go. And as we said before, Howard, <laughs> NFL scouts can't wait to get their hands on that guy. Or the, in fact, uh, Gil Brand of the Dallas Cowboys has said that he's just a surefire first-round draft choice. Johnny Major hoping to get an explanation. Roughing the passer. That's the call. And the 15-yard penalty killed the interception, or rather the uh, fumble recovery by Tennessee. It's been a tough night for John. He's, he's quite a guy, though, and much respected coach of the year after his national championship at Pittsburgh. This man, Jim Young, has had victories over Notre Dame, Michigan, and Ohio State in the last meetings between those three teams and Purdue. He was 31 and 13 in four years at Arizona. He walked right into a Purdue, was five and six the first year, but the last two years he's won 18 and lost only four, and he's going for his 19th win. Never had 10 wins in a year, though, so the Boilermakers want this. First down, and what a hit on Mike Augustiniak. He really took a jolt from number 50, Danny Spradlin, 